In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Heart of Algebra concepts, where in the official PSAT practice test, we're now in section four, calculator permitted, question one, so we know the difficulty level will reset. Tyra subscribes to an online gaming service that charges a monthly fee of $5.25 per hour for time spent playing premium games. Which of the following functions gives Tyra's cost in dollars for a month in which she spends X hours paying premium games? We've seen this question before, linear equations, so let's think about them in slope-intercept form. We have a variable rate. As applied to this problem, that would be based on the number of hours she plays. And then we have a fixed rate, which is flat or static, irrespective of the hours. And so all we have to do is substitute these values into this linear equation. We know she pays 25 cents per hour. X is the number of hours. So that's going to be 0.25x plus the fixed amount, the monthly fee, which is $5. And that is her fee for the month. And so the answer here is C. All right, the next algebra question will be question number two. A grocery store sells a brand of juice in individual bottles and in packs of six bottles. On a certain day, the store sold a total of 281 bottles of the brand of juice of which 29 were sold as individual bottles. Which equation shows the number of packs of bottles P sold that day? We've got two types of packaging. We have individual standalone bottles, and then we have these packs of six, six packs. On a certain day, 281 were, to were sold total, of which 29 were individual. So we need to subtract the 29. And if you notice, we don't even have to put the result, which would be 252 here. They're just asking to set it up. And so this result is 252, which is really this expression here. We've subtracted the individual bottles, just has to be divided by six, and that will get the number of six packs sold that day. The answer is A. We've got one more question in this video, question five. Which order pair x, y satisfies the system of equations shown below? I've mentioned this in previous videos. You're probably going to see several system of equation problems on the test. Sometimes there'll be an equation form like this, other times in word problem form. If they're in equation form, I recommend elimination. And so let's see, we have a negative y here, a positive 2y. I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. And I'll put the answer, the results down here. I get 4x, I get minus 2y equals 12. This equation, I'm just going to copy down here, and I get x plus 2y equals negative 2. Now I combine them. So you notice the, the y's will cancel out, and I'm just left with 5x equals 10, x equals 2. And if you notice, there's only one choice where we have a 2 for the x-coordinate. If you're really confident or just in a hurry, you could just pick C and go to the next question. Let's just confirm it. We're going to take 2 and plug it back in here. So then we're going to end up with 2y. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides equals negative 4. And then y does equal negative 2. That is the answer. As long as we're on this point, this question, I want to just review a couple of questions that I think you may see. Now remember here, if we found the solution here, 2 negative 2 is where there is one solution. So if you think about both these lines, just any two lines, where they intersect, that would be one solution. But I want to also review the other types of questions that you may see. What if we were told that two lines have no solution? All right. So two lines will have no solutions if they're parallel. So a question type that you could see, just going to give you an example I found from another test. Let's say we're given two equations. We have 3x minus 6y equals 10. And then we have an ax, let's say minus 18y equals 40. And we're told that these two equations have no solutions, and the question is asking to solve for a. So what you have to do, no solution really means that the two lines are parallel. You don't have to put them in slope-intercept form. You just have to make the x and y values the same. And you want to make sure that the y-intercept is different. And so here we have a negative 6y and a negative 18y. Here we don't know what, what uh, a is, so we're going to start with the y. What we can do is multiply this top equation by 3. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here. 
So what we could do now is this is going to turn into 9x, this is the top equation, minus 18y equals 30. I'm just going to copy the second equation down, ax minus 18y equals 40. So we do have the same y values, we want different y-intercepts, and so for these to have the same slope, a would equal 9, and that's what no solution is. Same x and y values, but different y-intercept. And by the way, if let's say this did turn into 40, and we made this 9, those would be what are called coincident lines. Those are equivalent lines, and equivalent lines have infinite solutions. So just keep those um, points in mind. You could have one solution where they intersect, you could have none if they're parallel, or you could have infinite if they are equivalent lines.